What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, of course. You're watching TWA Motorsports and today we're back on the Trans Am. Uh, we're gonna start kind of where we left off. So you guys remember in the last video, I went to hook this up and I said, oh, the bushing's gone. No, that's not quite the case. Um, this is one off of something else, okay? The, the, ten, the F body should have a 10 millimeter ball. And that's why this isn't snapping on. Well, good luck finding one of those guys because nobody has the old arm. Uh, I can't find mine. And so I'm assuming I sold it with the transmission because I did sell the original transmission out of this car. So what we've got today is a new kit to fix this. But in order to do that, I'm not sure we're gonna have to take this off. We may, uh, but for sure, we're gonna have to take the shifter arm off. So I'm gonna go get a 15 millimeter. Let's get that guy off there. Now, what we're gonna have to do once we get that off is we're gonna have to knock this out of the center. Okay, this is pressed in. So here's what I've got to replace it. These little kits here come with a keeper. You can see the little keeper in there. I think you can, yeah. So this slides through the entire piece and then this hole and then that little keeper goes on it. So that's, we're gonna have to take that plastic part apart up there as well. But first we need to grind down on the end of this and then this should just tap out once we get this flush. Don't take too much off, but just grind. It's kind of like a rivet head we're gonna take off here. This is what it looks like once we grind that down. So now I'm gonna take it over to my vise. We're gonna use a punch and we're gonna punch that center section out. This is what it looks like when you get that pressed out. And you can see, let me show you. That guy right there. So it's out and this now is what's going through there. The problem is, is they say that you don't have to open that hole up any, but as there is no way, neither one of these goes through there. So I'm gonna have to open that hole up just a little bit. I'm just gonna use a stepped drill bit and uh, open it up just a little bit. Using the step drill bit in a little time, I got it opened up to where it'll accept this now. So now you can see, I'm gonna go through there and we'll be able to put our keeper on the end. But we need to go disassemble the part in the car, which I think we will need a pick and a, um, maybe a flat blade screwdriver. I think we can probably do it with a pick. Flat blade, looks like a small flat blade. We'll give it a shot. See if we can pull that rubber isolator out of the end. I think we can. Hopefully without having to take this back off. They say that this pops off and then we'll just hollow that out basically. The whole pick thing didn't work. So you can see I've got the whole center out now. Um, was able to pull it out with a pair of diagonal cutters, just gripped outside and rolled it out. Okay, let's talk about the instructions a little bit. That makes sense, although it didn't say you have to open up the hole. When you push that piece of plastic out, you're gonna have to cut it in half and use it because if you don't, this piece falls right through. So now it's actually, hopefully gonna go through there. I've got the rubber grommet on there, cut in two, and that. I don't know. That's gonna be a tight fit. We'll see if we can get it pressed together. We'll know a little more once we do that. I was able to get it all assembled, but what I think I'm gonna to have to do is I'm gonna to have to get a pair of vice grips to cinch this together, like needle nose vice grips, in order to get the clip in. I mean, it's, it's snug, that's for sure. I'll tell you what they should do. They send you two of these center section. They should send you two of those clips because I dropped it and it took me about 10 minutes to find it, but I got it on there with some help by scripts. So use that basically to cinch these two together enough where I can push the clip on, but it's snug. I mean, I guess it repaired it. You know, that's what we needed. Anyway, uh, I may set it down to make sure that it feels like it's going through the gears like it's supposed to. Uh, I don't think we have any issue. You can still get these arms, just not the one for the F body. Next thing I'm going to try to connect is this upper hose that goes from our um, the piece that our radiator, old radiator didn't have, our steam port vent, to our steam port. Now we've bypassed the throttle body, the newer throttle body doesn't have one anyway, but I don't know if you guys have ever seen these, but these are Gates um, hose clamps and they're heat shrink. So what I'm going to do is opposed to having a bunch piled up right here um, of like worm clamps, I'm going to slide two of these on. One here, you can see I've got a disconnect or a connection here. 
I'm going to slide one here, one here. We're going to heat that thing up and um, that'll make this look a little nicer and not drag and risk wearing out the actual upper radiator hose. After getting this all heat shrinked, I put a little bit of new heat wrap on it and not crap on my water pump, but uh, looks way better. I used a worm clamp here to connect it to our T. I also moved the T, it was facing this way and I wanted it to be away from the water pump and the belt and then use the original um, clamp, the ones that I hate over there. But that looks a lot nicer than, I had three or two other worm clamps here and I was afraid they were gonna dig into this hose. So that'll work. Okay, I got the next two pieces to the puzzle in. We need a trans cooler. Guys, a trans cooler is really the only reason I haven't been able to start this thing yet is because we can't just leave the transmission open. I chose to go with one from Motion Raceworks. Um, this has got a fan. And uh, I, the problem is I'm gonna have to order some more line. We're gonna have to make some line, but I wanna get this mounted. Where am I gonna mount it? Well, I'm gonna mount it in the back. And this is the piece I was waiting on. So um, on this car in the front, we have the Midwest chassis front mount, the tubular mount, okay? Where the fog lights can still be included. And I did that to open it up for intercoolers if we wanted to put an intercooler on this thing. Now, because I'm not doing the turbos now and think I'll probably end up doing a pro charger down the road, um, I, I kind of want to keep my options open for a front mount. Now, I'm not going to saw the front of that out. That is not happening. Uh, so I may end up going with the lower mounted ones that come from pro charger if I do pro charge this thing down the road. But for the back one, and I'm still going to, I'm going to continue to mount this back here. We need to get this rear bumper off. So what I'm going to work on here is since it's up in the air, man, there's spider webs everywhere. I'm probably going to grab my vacuum, get rid of some of the spiders, but we need to get, see that clip there. There's one, there's two, three, four, five, six clips from the bottom. And then if you'll notice, there is a bolt here on the side that we can get out. I don't know if you guys can see that 10 millimeter up there. And then there is a screw that comes in from the outside. I should be able to get all that while it's up in the air. And then um, we'll put it down and work on the inside to getting the rest of the rear bumper off. Now, once we get all those clips out, those screws and the 10 millimeter that comes in from the outside should be loose right here. That's perfect. Now, what we need to do is we need to come on the inside and unfortunately we're gonna have to take some stuff apart. So I'm gonna get this out of the way. This side just snaps in. There's two clips up here that you need to pull straight up on. And then on this side, I generally like to use, you can almost use your thumb, but don't use a screwdriver and wreck these. If you lightly push down on them and turn them, sometimes I use a penny even. Um, it's just way easier on it, but I don't want to screw anything up back here. So let me get that out of the way and I'll show you what's next. You can see we've got those loose now. And <clears throat> for the most part over here is all open. You can see everything over here. We're going to have to move that carpet back in order to get to what we need to get to. But the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the little thumb screws off that hold the tail light in. There should be five of them if they're all connected. Let's get the tail light out. You don't necessarily have to take it out, but sometimes there is a wiring harness that goes in the top of this. And if there is, you're going to have trouble pulling it out. You're going to end up breaking something. So it's just best to take the five screws out of this. Now, once you do that, be careful because this is held in with the tail lights. There's nothing else that holds this in. So just remember that. Don't let this fall on the ground or break. Got those out and you can see that I've got some cleaning ahead of me. But um, once we get those out of place, now I'm glad I did that because for a couple of reasons. One, you could see what I'm talking about, how the wiring harness clips in there across here. But the other thing is you'll notice there's clips um, that hold it all the way across. So we need to get those out next. And then for the ones that are coming in this way, I'm just going to release this with a pair of needle nose. The other ones I'm going to pop the clip open with a flathead screwdriver so it'll be free from that. And I think after we get those accomplished, we'll have a couple more 10 millimeters. There's one here in the corner. I believe there's one more up there and it may even be behind. Yeah, it's actually behind the power antenna. I don't think the, the other one was the one that came in, um, the, the 10 millimeter that you guys saw come in underneath. So I think there's only three there. 
Now I pulled this corner piece of carpet out that this side doesn't have because of the spare. And you can see the 10 millimeter right there. There was another one, there's a stud right there that I already got. And that should be it. Um, we may have to undo some lights, like the license plate light when we come out, the side marker lights, but we can at least get it loose and pull it back and then twist those lights out of place, I believe. This one back here, you're gonna have to get, you can see it, my light's right on it. Uh, you'll probably have to use a ratcheting wrench, like a 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench to get it loose. Now you can see I've gradually walked it back. And the reason I did that is so I can reach in here and unplug, just untwist the light on the side, the one for the license plate light, and obviously the one on the other side here. They should just be twist in connections. Not sure what I was thinking here, but there's a Torx in there we're gonna have to take loose because there's a, you can't get your hand in this spot to unplug this. So we're definitely gonna have to take those loose. This one in the center is a twist, though I've already got it loose. T15 is all you're gonna need to get this loose. And then you can see, you can pull it out. It slides in the front there, pull it back. And then we can twist and unplug it. And just like that, it's off. And you could see this big chunk that we're going to be removing this whole piece is going to be coming off which not only drops some weight um, but gives me the ability to mount that trans cooler somewhere back here in the back i mean this is a lot of area that's uh kind of unused to be honest with you but anyway we're going to continue i'm going to go ahead and start taking some of the bolts out of this uh, i haven't taken one of these off in a really long time guys so it may take me a minute it actually looks like it's riveted right here Maybe there's a bolt on the back side. No, it's riveted. Hmm. We have to drill some rivets out. I did indeed have to drill those out. There's uh, four rivets there. You can see where I, I just used a step drill bit, went right through them. So now I think all that we have to do is unbolt it from the inside. Um, the bolts should be, in fact, we may lift it up. In fact, I think we're going to for sure. Let's lift it back up. We should have access to those bolts underneath. Once we got it back up in there, you can see the four 13 millimeters per side that hold it in. Let's get this thing out of here. Be careful, I had to hold on to that. It started to fall on one side, but now it's out of the way. I'm gonna take some time to clean this up, but before I do, let's go grab the new piece and kind of see how it lines up. So here's the situation. It's in, like I said, I'm not, I'm not in love with the customer service, but it does fit. Um, what I didn't realize, I was looking for four holes, right? Uh, but what I didn't realize is because of the spare tire well, they actually push this off center a little bit. Um, so you're wanting to mount in that outer hole towards the passenger side and the inner hole on the driver's side, if that makes sense. You guys can see the outers don't have any. And what I did was I measured from the fender or the, the rear quarter in and it's equal distance. So we are where we need to be. And then you can kind of line up if you look at the lock, which is hopefully in the middle of the car, it's kind of in the middle of this bend. See, there's a slight bend here and a slight bend here. And then it's in the center of these two pieces where it clips from the bottom. But now I think I'll go ahead and run it down um, somewhat snug. We'll have to test fit. It has some movement up and down and whatnot. So we'll just, we'll kind of address that as we go back together. I don't necessarily think I don't think you're gonna be able to get back behind it. Maybe you will. But look at the room now we have to mount um, that cooler. We've got a ton of room back here and it's a ton of wasted room to be honest with you. Um, this is a crash bar, so I mean, is it gonna be as sturdy as the crash bar we took out? No, probably not. But from the looks of the Trans Am over there, that thing doesn't do a whole lot anyway. That was a low speed collision and um, it bent all of this including the lock and the and the whole back of the car so yeah it's not not necessarily saving you if you get hit real hard in the back so one of the last things i think i want to do in this video is i want to get these kind of lined up so what i did was i took these uh i was going to put these ends on myself and then i talked to a buddy and he was going to crimp ends on then we ultimately used what came with the trans cooler so what i've got is two 20 foot lines i know that's a lot but the plan here is to go from the transmission to the back. I only put lines on two of them because I was going to, the plan here is to go start with the transmission. Okay. So hook on the lines up here, 
that come out of the side and I'll try to show you. And then route down this guy over to possibly this area or actually, you know what, a guy could come, I'll just come down the uh, this line with the fuel line, follow it, come up over the rear end, I'm thinking back here and then to the very back and that's where we're gonna put the trans cooler or at least that's the plan. I haven't quite decided yet how I'm gonna mount it. Um, I'd really like to use existing holes if possible to get that thing mounted. So I'm gonna have to probably design something or figure something out as far as bracing uh, to tie that thing in without me having to actually cut this. But this is where that cooler is gonna go. I know I let the video off with me putting this on and it looks good, but um, the whole goal here was to put the trans cooler like in this area. Now, I've seen some people mount it here on the bottom as well, but I just, I would rather have it, you know, somewhere here. And honestly, guys, because I'm not doing anything in the front right now, I could put it in the front. But um, eventually, I think we'll do some sort of intercooler up there and it'll be in the way. So in my opinion, let's just go ahead and knock this out now. So I'm going to go ahead and loosely fit the lines and then I'll show you kind of how I've got them routed. So I've loosely got it tied onto the lines up there. You can barely see it. Got it running back here over the trans cross member. Got it right here. You can see I've got it zip tied just to see my links. Then I came here, zip tied to the fuel line, zip tied, zip tied, zip tied. We've got it up behind all the brake lines. I've got it, I'm gonna pin it right here. I'm gonna have to get like a, one of those self tappers similar to what the factory actually puts in. Uh, one of those guys there, which I may, now that I think about it, I don't know if it's big enough, but I may rob one off the parts Trans Am over there. Um, okay, so then going over the sweat, or not the sway bar, but the pan hard rod mount that's right there, back over this heat shield. And then honestly, guys, I'm gonna have to use another one of those things, probably. I'd like to put one maybe here or here. I don't wanna have a screw sticking into the um, spare tire well, which is another reason why I don't wanna like put any screws or bolts back here. So I'd like to tie in somehow to either this bracket or that upper, those upper holes there. But you kind of get the idea of what I'm thinking. And like I said, I think this is where we're gonna end this video. Um, we got some stuff accomplished. This video has been going for a while. And actually the plan now is I'm going to be buying, originally I was gonna do a chassis mounted torque arm. So basically a torque arm that mounts where the old um, like stamped piece of metal went through. I'll actually, I think I've got one over here. I'll show you on the, right there. So that factory stamped piece of metal right there, they make a torque arm mount that goes there. But the more I read about it, the more people say a lot of times they get a little squirrely on the highway or on the road when you hit the brakes, when it has a, cause that changes the center of gravity on the car. So I think now that I think about it, I'm going to put a trans, relocation bracket in with a long torque arm. I think that would be more beneficial for street driving because that's the majority of what this thing's gonna be doing is street driving. So I really need to get one of those first. Once I get one of those, then I can kind of rig up and I may go ahead and start a video soon of me rigging up something to mount that trans cooler in the back. Um, but I wanna kind of know how big that thing is so I know where I can tie my lines and how short I can cut them because we're gonna be working with, you know, uh, I don't want to cut too short and I don't want them too long. So hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, please like always go down there and smash that thumbs up button. Guys, if you are not subscribed, go down, hit the subscribe button. Of course, like always ring that bell notification that will notify you every single time we drop a new video on this or anything else and stay tuned to see what we work on next.